What's up, what's up, what's up, what's going on everybody, you're listening to the Ray and Trey show, I go by the name of Trey Manning I'm Raymond Vicious Oh man, uh, before we get too deep into anything, I definitely want to make sure you guys, if you're not watching us on YouTube, make sure you check us out on iTunes and tune in Like, subscribe, comment, if you subscribe, you'll stay updated on everything that we do, everything that we put out, especially on YouTube YouTube, we're really, gro- we're growing, man, like we're glowing getting up Getting bigger, we're, we're getting there, up. you're getting there Man, we came from we came from zero to subscribers, then they take subscribers away from us. YouTube <laughs> does not like us. They don't like At anything all. about it's us. Cause we're, it's because we're both black. You know what it was? Is when we came into it and we said, you know what? Uh, we're two broke dudes. We have nothing else to do but make make great content. They was like, no, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're not slow, white. Slow down, black man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not white. How dare you? Slow, slow down, black man. We gonna Where do y'all think y'all going with this? Um, diversity? <laughs> oh, 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 a Puerto Rican diversity? and a black guy. They think they really oh, going to no. do this. Uh-uh. Y'all get too. Y'all prospering too much before we get too deep into this i definitely want to have a moment of silence for the late great afini shakur she was a mother a daughter a sister activist uh very powerful so we're just gonna get five seconds of silence real quick all right right how you feel baby how you this, feel? this one hurts. You feel we're, we're like antsy right now, like we're incredible. Yo, I'm antsy. For, I'm antsy with this because I've been dying to get this man on this show. I feel I feel bad for anyone who's not actually watching the video of this because uh-huh. if you're just listening to the audio, you can't see this great man sitting across from you. <laughs> this man is this man is like a legend in my eyes, man. <laughs> when I tell you we've been plotting on trying to get this man on this show, we've been plotting like we've been plotting on how to get this man on the show, like we was trying to kill him. So so we just sat here talking with him for a few minutes, but yeah. here's something we did not tell you means you are our very first guest. Give it up for me for being our first guest. Last our very first. guest. Yes. Very first guest. This man there is a go. husband, an actor, a businessman. God damn, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, excited. <laughs> a mentor, an advocate for the youth. He is everything great and all things powerful. He's Lord Anthony Means. Thank you. What's up, Means? Means, talk to me, man. How you feel? I'm good, man. I really, I really am good. See, this this is what happens on video. See, you're distracting everybody because you Ray dropped the mic for guys who can't see this. All right. First of all, enjoy this because this is lovely. Right this is. <laughs> You, you you good? No. See, this is we we got. I should take a commercial break right now. <laughs> no, we good, we good, we good. All right, we good. We good. All right. So I didn't put it together, but there we go. There we go. All right, there we go. Perfect. All, All right. right, we're back. Let's Ray, go. Ray got his mic back. Means how you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm excited to be here. You look great, man. Thank you. You you. The last time I seen you, right? Mm-hmm. We were sitting in your office. And you kind of had this cloud. Now you like glowing, man. Yeah, like you, you got, look. Like, you look like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. You glow. I, you glowed up. I did glow up. <laughs> you that's glowed that up. Sleep, huh? <laughs> that rest. I that's that. That's that. I've been hibernation. I've been relaxing for two weeks, and then uh, last weekend was uh, my 11th year anniversary. Ooh, congratulations. congratulations! Congratulations! There you go. All right, so, give uh, a wifey a so- yes, shout out. Yes. Segue. My, segue my to the wifey. Wifey. <laughs> beautiful wife, Demetrius. So we have celebrated 11 year, wonderful years of marriage together we had a great weekend so um, I'm, this is man. the uh this is i'm still you know i'm still glowing off that uh, oh okay. all right all right brother be. all right <laughs> all right uh man where do we start where do well we i mean I, there's people out there who, who aren't familiar with you i so know we're gonna please. have a lot of listeners who yeah. know who you are but right. you know tell the people about yourself well um my name is anthony means i've been working or well, how i met ray and dre well i've I met Ray yeah. because uh, we, live in, the we same, lived in the same building. building so he kind of partially seen me grow up. Right. So, yeah. yeah, Ray Ray told us about this building right. on the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 92. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, the Warwick building. Warwick. Yeah. Warwick. And um, and then I met Dre. Uh, Andre and I worked together at a place. Yes. That place. Which, <laughs> will not be dis- <laughs> which will not be named. Moving <laughs> forward, we'll just be called At The Place. At The, all right. the at Place. The place. At no the Place. Problem. And um, so uh, I've been working with uh, y- uh, young people for over 25 years. Wow. Okay. I- I've been saying 25 years for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's been way over 25, but I just keep that number. So yeah. it's, it's probably a little bit more than that. I, I didn't really calculate it. All right. You know what I mean? All right. It's, it's, it's probably a little bit way over. 30 right? or something. Yeah. I mean, but this, this is, goes back to, uh, you know, when I was like uh, maybe uh, considered. A fifteen-year-old. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I say considered because. So you've been in child education for. Because I'm Lord Means, and. and exactly. <laughs> so you've been in child education for like. There you go. <laughs> thirty me, thirty years now. Yeah, yeah, about say, thirty right? years. Roundabout. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um. So I mean, 
I guess it's I'm only relevant if you've worked with me um, or if like I've affected your children or work with you because mm-hmm. you are like a, a student of mine. Yeah. Um, so you know, so that was I guess that's how I know. So. I'm, I'm gonna stop you. I wanna I wanna interject real quick before yeah. we get too too deep into your youth advocacy. Right. You know we're gonna talk about you being an actor. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Are we getting an actor? Yeah, Let's we're go. gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna dive acting. right in. Uh, you're an actor. Yeah. You uh, want to know? How, wait, I gotta say this. You wanna know how we knew Meads was an actor before we even told us he was an actor? How? how? We would walk into the office mm-hmm. and the headshot. It was, was a big there. ass headshot of Anthony Meads. And that with that pose, right. I'm like, yo, that's and a headshot. And that was only yeah. because my wife had come, she had uh, come to my office and yeah. she was like, you don't have any pictures up, yeah, of uh-huh. yourself. So she made or, you put the headshot so up. So she was like, put up something, and that's yeah. what I had. So I just put that up, and you know, mm. I was lambasted for mm. that yeah. for, for years. <laughs> I remember my interview with you. Like I walked in, I was like, is that a headshot? Yo, it's a big ass. Because it's, it's kinda, <laughs> in retrospect, it's kind of like conceited. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Like, like, yeah, like, it is not you know, small. The picture was right behind you, so it was like you looking at you. (laughs) And then that. How did how did you get into acting? There we go. So I went to a place that I um, that I can talk about. Okay. um, (coughs) Boys Harbor. Okay. All right. On 104th Street and Fifth Avenue. Boys Harbor. Is it Uh, still around? It's still around. It's not as predominant, right? It's not what it was. Okay. And and maybe we'll we'll talk about like just that in general, like youth development agencies like how they've changed over the years or whatever oh yeah we definitely got to touch base on that but um went there um there were uh so the boys harbor grew up there and um i remember my f- like first week there because my sister went there yeah and um so i had a class like people in my little class you'd come after school and you know you kind of did stuff out with your class and then, mm. so one day they had this fashion show and i saw people from my class in the fashion show which i didn't even know we was having a fashion show one and okay. two I was like, how the heck did they get it? (laughs) And then, so I was like, I was like, was like my first any kind of performance experience. Like I hadn't even rehearsed anything. I hadn't ever even heard of fashion shows. I didn't even know that people did these did things. these things yeah. that that I actually knew, yeah. and I was like, so it was like some of my classmates in there, yeah. and I, I must have been around six, uh, okay. and I was like, like calling them by name. I was like, like Ray, Dre, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they were. Like they couldn't talk to me, yeah. and I was like, "They're not talking to me." And, they, and someone told me, "Like, yes, yeah, because they're they're in the fashion show and yeah. they're, they're performing." And then after the fashion show was a dance, and they were the same people were in the dance, and I was yeah. like, "Yo, I gotta do that." Yeah. Like how to? And so it started out with fashion shows right. and um, dance. Okay. They had dance at the at the Boys Harbor. You and danced? danced? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I actually danced at the Fell Forum at Madison Square Park. Nice. Wow. When I was about ten years old. Okay. Yeah. All hip, right. A little hip hop. Right. All right. All right. I was, right. I was yeah. say you might. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Not bad. I'm a regular renaissance man. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you got bars too, so. Uh, Wait, you need to spin? I can spin a little bit. All right. Well, you know. <laughs> so, uh, what was the first, uh, I, I don't want to say film, what was your first work? Uh, so, um, I mean, I did a lot of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I did a lot of theater, experimental theater. Okay. Um, what, what, what is that? Well, yeah, what is what So, do you experimental mean theater, it, so, so, Broadway is Broadway, right? Yeah. It's yes. about seats. That's what makes a Broadway show a Broadway show. It's okay. how many seats are in the, in the theater. Okay. So off Broadway has less amount of seats. Okay. The audience size determines how you know the 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 significance of the seriousness of the work. Yeah. Okay. Say. Not I won't say the seriousness, but like it speaks to like uh, like how far away from the mainstream you are. Okay. Okay. So experimental theater is like usually maybe like you and I wrote a script. Yeah. And then we're we have a, ca- a group of people who are also interested in acting and mm-hmm. then we kind of like put our play out we don't we don't really have any sponsorship okay all you right know, it's it's real you know like it's more independent independent independent, independent. All right. okay so, okay um usually experimental <laughs> is when like the the actors and the directors they aren't professional like they're not in any mm-hmm. unions mm-hmm. they probably haven't worked anything major these they're, more so people with passion of being right and they're okay. starting out you know like it's helping them grow and exactly, learn from the trade exactly. all right makes sense so um i was like this uh experimental thing uh, and a repertoire company does they just does series of plays okay so we were all teen you know like young folks um under the direction of a woman by the name of kathy kennedy kathy kennedy i'm giving you a plug <laughs> <laughs> and um hey. Hey, Miss Kennedy. Lynette Purnell. Miss Purnell. I can't remember her first name. Um, those were my acting coaches. Yeah. So, um, but Miss Kennedy, um, she had invited a agent mm. to a play. We did a we did a remake of um, Alice in Wonderland. 
meet Cinderella. Okay. All right. So we called you can it. definitely tell that's independent. It was <laughs> called. Um, it's a weird mix. It was called. I forget, I forget the name of the play. Make it up. Nah. <laughs> we, had, we, had a legit. we were kids, though. Um, <laughs> so um, the guy, his name is Tandon Hayes, creative talent management. Um, <laughs> Plug it like crazy. <laughs> he, uh, they came to the, to the performance. I played a, a lawyer. I was like, like, really transformed like I got into this character mm-hmm. um, so it was like it was like you know how in Cinderella the uh, is the is the pumpkin mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well this was like a loss this was like the black version like that we wrote so <laughs> instead of a cat a pumpkin they had yeah. like like she had to go to court because they were trying to take custody away from so it was it like was, it, was, it was like Oz yeah, not yeah, Oz yeah. it was um not the Wizard like, of Oz um, what's the black version of Wizard of Oz Wiz the Wiz, Wiz. Right, right, Wiz right, yeah. right, right. I but, said Oz but, but with, that's unfortunate you didn't know that though but with Cinderella Okay. So yeah, I think I want to call Cindy in Oz. I think that's what we called it, Cindy in Oz, not Cinderella. Cindy in Oz. Okay. So I also played like it wasn't a scarecrow, but it was like whatever the scarecrow's character would have been in an urban setting. I can't remember the name. Okay. Oh, so all right, Mike, because Mike played the 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 scarecrow, scarecrow Wiz, right? Right, yeah. right, right. But it wasn't the scarecrow. It was more like a urban version, like because right, right. Mike played the urban right, version, right, right, cool right, down, right, right. Yeah. So cool down, down. yeah. Hey. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So, so the so the spark for acting started really young. Started me. really young. Um, I, you know, we got to talk about that role. Which one? <laughs> My favorite role. Have you ever seen him in Law and Order? Yeah, he showed me. I, th- yeah. That role, no matter how many kids came into the program, they was like, "You knew here, yo." You know means the actor. Yep, that's exactly how I figured it out. <laughs> you know, People, everybody would say that. You know, you know means was a means in Law and Order, right? Come see this. Yo, yo, pull up to the Xbox. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And, they, and they'll play this episode. How did how did you land that role in Law and Order? Well, um, so Enemy Territory. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Law and Order was the last uh, thing that I did. I did that in like '88. Wow. Okay. That was like early season. And that was that was the Lord pilot. Lord. That was the pilot. That was episode. the pilot. Episode. That was the first episode, like the, the pilot first, pilot. The very wow. First on order. Um, that was the one that's gonna. So you did the pilot. So a pilot is basically when they. Off. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. picks it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had met Dick Wolf. Yeah. It was. A, oh, you met. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, but before that, I did. Um, so let me just talk about that. Um, okay. <laughs> those were some fun times. Um. Mm. So the guy. We, so what happened was. Um, they sent me out on my first audition, which was like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a it was a print ad for a video magazine. Okay. And so after that, I started going to these auditions, and I like, so like the first time was like some real nervousness. They send you this thing called size. It's just a script, it's like okay. two pages. Yeah, yeah. You look it over, and then you get there, and you kind of like you can read it or you can recite. You know, mm-hmm. you can kind of act out. You know, you have your scene. They call your name. You go inside. So um, after like. So I was kind of, I'm not going to wait, I was really lucky. Mm-hmm. Like my first audition, I got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. wow. And then like the second thing I auditioned for, I got it. So okay. I, it was like, this was not. It was back to back. Back to back is stuff that doesn't happen. Yeah. And. It's probably very rare today, Very right? rare, right? Right. So, but um, I created this little thing I would do. Yeah. Like uh, this transformation that, like, that would begin from home. And by the time I got to the audition, I was this other character. I changed clothes and all that stuff. So. Okay. Um, the Enemy Territory, I mean, Lord, I keep saying Enemy Territory. Enemy Territory was the first movie I did. Actually, oh, wow. it was the second. Um, there's a movie called Desperately Seeking Susan with uh, Madonna. Okay. Oh, okay. So I actually got booked for that, and I got booked for um, Enemy Territory at the same time. And yeah. the shooting, oh, you was doing your thing. Yeah, yeah you was blo- The you shooting was at the same day. So, like, the AD came, the assistant director came to me and was like, um, Anthony Means? I'm like, yeah, um, um, we, we see that you're supposed to. You have another shooting today? I was like, yeah, I'm trying to hurry up and wrap this up because yeah. I got to get across town. But uh, apparently it's a, it's a sad rule against that. You can't... Have more than one one movie role? Well, you can, but you can't double book yourself in one, in one day. In one day. So, um, they so was, uh, I so, had to choose. Okay. So Damn. I picked um, Enemy Territory because they were paying me the most money okay. and I had booked with them. I had signed their contract first. Yeah. So um, the Desperate Seeking Susan scene, I always look at that scene and I realize it was a probably, well, either movie didn't really do that well in box office. Okay. Um, the sad, sadly, um, so my role in Enemy Territory, I was a gang member. Uh, okay. And um, at the time, I was at a program called Upward Bound. Uh. Upward Bound. I'm about to talk about some people right here. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit mad at some here folks. Here we go. Yeah. This is what we want. No, go ahead. But, uh, 
No, but um, so it was like you know that yeah. this is kind of kind of leads me to the youth development thing. Um, yeah. So okay. Upper Bound was about you know it was a culture awareness. We learned about self identity. Yeah. You know, um, and so they were so into the community mm -hmm. that when they saw me portraying this gang member, it enraged my people, my people, my really? mother, my godmother, the people who worked at this after school program. And you know what they did? They went and picketed my movie. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was laugh at that. Like, cause you know, they were social activists for real. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. And I was like, dad, y'all couldn't wait so after to, like, like that, another movie, that, that, this is did, my first. Did that hurt you at all? It didn't hurt I, it, me. Did it hurt your career? But it hurt the that? movie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. movie only stayed out a week, and then oh. it, and it was like some big name actors in there. Like Kadeem Hardison was in there. The guy Bud, Stacy Dash, um, Jan Michael Vincent, mm. um, Ray Parker Jr. Wow. Um, it was a lot of like uh, Tony Todd. Yeah, yeah I know he that, was yeah. in it. He played um, Dark Man. You never see Dark Man. No, oh. I've never seen Darkman. Yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. seen Darkman. I know who that is. Anyway, some actors in there. Yeah, you know, some people that you guys know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, and so like like big '80s stars, right? Like, yeah, like and Tony like Kadeem was my. We were the two gang members that was in the movie. We were like tight. So okay. like after the set, Kadeem would like throw me on his bike. Like y'all, he had to go to the A train or whatever. Yeah. But I need to get to the six. And he would somehow when we were shooting, we was we shot down there at the bottom of the yeah. Williamsburg Bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would ride me to the train, Kadeem Harnison on his bike. Nice. So what we what we should do is when, whenever the video comes out, we should have the picture right there of means in like find the screenshot okay. and screenshot and put that picture right oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I actually have a VHS copy of. Uh... I don't. We don't have VCRs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what we were playing on. <laughs> they, it's definitely got to be out though. Yeah, it's, it's a DVD, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be yeah, on yeah. DVD. Yeah, everything's been traced. Um, I did. Another... wanted to slap. I think Reed wanted to slap you at that moment. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's VHS. Like one day I found a uh, at the at the place. Uh -huh. yeah. I found a old Walkman oh. in my closet. And I pulled it out and showed the teens. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, "Anybody know what this is?" And they were like, no, um, they didn't. You said, "I hate when you, you for real." A remote control. I mean, uh, if if you showed me, I know what an A track looks like now. Yeah, right. If you would have showed me an A track at that age, I would have been like, uh, what is that? Uh, an Atari system. Right. Yeah, yeah. I would have completely. An Atari cartridge. And it was the old. It was the old uh, Walkman with the waterproof. It had little plastic. Oh, case the plastic. Was, case. You, uh, uh, you know, why do I always think of Walkman? I always think like it's all yellow and gray. That's the Sony yeah, Walkman. That's the yellow. Right, so I'm not going yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's the main one. Like, they had no idea with that. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm not going crazy. Every, everybody. Everybody. My sister had Cats like Ben Vonte. They didn't know what it was. You get mad, Ben. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out to Ben. Yeah, shout out to Ben. Huge fan. We love for, him, Ben. For yes. all of the support that oh, he's yeah. been giving us, man. <laughs> I know he, he's gonna be the first person watching this episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ben Valdez will be. You enjoy Ben. All right. So now, so I did another movie. It was called uh, with Mickey Rock called. Uh, it's not my day with this. Sea of Love. Okay. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was another movie I did. Sea of Love is with our. Um, Al Pacino. Okay. Wow. I did that. I, so, that so that movie, I, I actually did the film and got paid for, but they edited my scene out of that movie, so you don't. There's no actual that image sucks, of me in that movie. Man. Okay. How do you? And then know, there's another though, movie called Homeboys with Mickey Rock. I did that. How do you know when they edit out? They let you know, or do you yeah, have yeah, yeah, to wait till the movie I, you comes You know what? Out? When we were filming that, I knew I was gonna get yeah. kind of. Yeah, cause I kind of upstage. You can feel it, right? You can start and feeling it. I, I got two gangster with him. And I think I spat at him. <laughs> you can't spit at Al Pacino. Ah, can't do that. Hey, uh, this guy, he spat on me for real. I just spit on him. <laughs> so, roughly, how many movies did you do before you decided, you know what? Uh, well, it wasn't ever like a, you know what, I just, well, I went away to school, I went away to college. Okay. Uh, Virginia okay. State University. So, you necessarily, you never really just like walked away from it. Once you went to school, it was kind of, it kind of took like a back seat to, to everything else? I mean, like, I mean, also, you know, like, so by then I was kind of like on this, like, I needed to be, I felt like... At that time, it was like not being a, a sellout, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, like it was to me, it was like I started actually myself looking at those roles yeah, and was being, wondering, like, you know, you were being typecasted. I won't say I was being typecasted mm -hmm. at all. Um, those were roles that my agent felt like I could get. Oh, yeah. I, and I was I had a successful track record, mm -hmm. but I was kind of feeling like. Is this all there is? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. being coming it was from too repetitive for you, right? Well, no, just coming from like you know the the people I was around, like who who infected my psyche. Yeah, 
you know, it was kind of like it made me question, like, you know, what am I putting out? You know, I was really like was heavy, was heavy kid. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's like, you know, you are putting this stuff out, these images out, like, how does this impact, you know, the people? Mm-hmm. That was my thing. That was. Let me ask one last question about this. The money was it sustaining you where you were like your living well, expenses? I was, I was, was in the high money? School. Yeah. So oh, was, so you were in high school. Yeah. So this was way. This, was, this, this not was even good. when you I was. Were, I was. You know. You were making. You were happy I with the good. experience. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, my the enemy territory uh, happened like, um, you know, the eighty eight. That's documented. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, um, like it didn't come out. I was like a. I was in um, at Virginia State. Okay. You know. Wow. Okay. So. Oh, okay. And like I, I had actually, I had <laughs> actually, I filmed it my like senior year mm-hmm. in high school, and then it it didn't actually come out until my freshman year in college, and then like I had, I think I was at that time I was like I had I was in the tail end of doing something, so like I wasn't even in school when it came out, like I was away that weekend. Okay. So when I came back to school. People had saw the show. Mm. Oh wow! So I mean, that was that was a that was kind of that was dope, action. right? Yeah. So let's 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 put it like and put some things in perspective. Yeah. He's from Harlem, right? He's acting at a young age. Uh-huh. Pretty sure the money the money was great. This man, the attention up. was wonderful. Oh man, they were flocking to you, weren't they? <laughs> and then he's tall too. Right. Yeah, then so. he's tall too. I know you you had to beat him up with a stick, didn't you? I mean, you know. I mean, you marry now, so you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't. Um, I know his wife. Look, I ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> that man talk, asked these questions. Look, look, we're talking about single means. He wasn't right. married. Right. He wasn't thinking about uh, marriage. You know, at yeah, that age, right. women, you know, don't right. <laughs> women don't care. Women don't care. I mean, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. So now you moved down to New Orleans, right? I'm, I'm, I'm oh, kind of yes, skipping yeah, some yeah. things. So, yes, I was at Virginia. You was in Virginia. Was there. And then, um, actually, so I got a job. I was working yeah. for Depart- Division for Youth. I was working with uh, juveniles. So that's that's how you first got into it when, when it comes to child development, No, right? no, I've been working with kids. Like, my jobs in the summer. So you were still doing acting and Work working with kids. With kids. Yeah. So oh, it started from young. Because the place that I was going to, Boys Harbor, was an after school program. That's where I got the whole hookup. It, yeah, the experience of it, right? So, you know, that was I was like able to get the auditions through Upper Bound, and I mean Upper Bound. So you were busy all the time. Busy going through the after Jeez. school. They hooked me up with the agent, and uh, so okay. I just worked for them people. Yeah. So it was just. The same place. You barely had time for yourself. You were working like. Well, it was. Nothing. I had yeah. time for myself. I was. Yeah. I was. It was. You know. That was saying. It was the Lord coming to Lord. You know <laughs> it was like the dark time in the Bible. They talk about the yeah. dark time. Yeah. Seven days. It was yeah. like yeah. It was them seven days. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you were working for a Division for Youth in Virginia or in, or in New York? New York. In New right. York. Okay. So, so I, I had left Virginia. Okay. Right. Came came back came home. Came back to New York. Okay. Um, um, was working for the Division for Youth. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't have a degree, and I was. I remember. Uh, so a friend of mine, um, how I got the job. A friend of mine was like, "Oh, I got some positions over." Here. In mm-hmm. fact, some of the some of the, some of the, some of the young brothers that was in there like turned up. They didn't use that. They hadn't turned back in the day. Yeah, yeah. They turned up. So they got pretty rowdy back they then. Got, <laughs> they, so. Um, the guy who was the manager yeah. brought me in and, and another guy in to help support him to okay. work with his work with because he knew we were good with kids. So they were, were they violent? Like they really yeah, yeah, got it was, violent? It was, like, it was a yeah. juveniles wow. on the lockup facility. Jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was okay. lockup. Okay. So um, anyway, I was working there for a while. Was doing my thing. Was really doing well. And like I remember like talking to the boss one day, and he was like, oh, "Well, you know, you don't have a degree, so yeah, pretty much." You know, we love you here, but you know, I realized like it was a glass ceiling. Like yeah. this was mm-hmm. that was it. That was gonna be it. Like mm-hmm. I was gonna be a term was YDA. It's I had horrible. to give me a two. Yeah. It was a YDA two. I got promoted, but that was yeah. That was as far that as, as, far as, as, far as, as go. it was gonna be. And yeah. I was like, this isn't my life. Yeah. Like I don't know what life I'm living right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, out of a fluke, I mean, there were things I would say stuff that happened to my in my life that were by chance that I, you know. You know, grace, the grace of God. Like, you know, it was like fortunate situations. Mm-hmm. So um, we had a training. We had to go to this training. It was in Albany. And we went up to the training. And while we're in training, after the training, like they had a break. They had a lunch break. I had a choice. I could have went and chilled. 
mm-hmm. or they said, or you could walk around the the, the, the facility, it main, right? It was the main yeah. headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was in, we was in um, Albany, New York. <clears throat> or you could walk around. We we've arranged so you can go to the different pl- parts of the agency, and and like you can go to your personal history file, and just you know. Do some other stuff and like interact get to, with the interact stuff. With yeah. People. Okay. And I, I really was sitting there and I debated for like five seconds. I was like, should I just chill? Because the training was gonna be all day. Yeah. And everyone was chilling. So I said, you know, I walk around. Let me do something different. This, was a made, this, this decision to chill or not chill was a major decision. So I walked around and I walked and I wound up in the um, HR office. And I was like, oh, let me look at my personal history file now, just to look at it. Yeah. Like, let's, let me see what's in it. Right, you know, all your write ups or whatever. So I looked through it, it was nothing in there, whatever. So the the lady walked out the back and she goes, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, Hey, I'm fine. I work at the I work down at the Bronx mm-hmm. at the you know, facilities down there. She was like, Oh, okay, you're here for the trial. I'm like, Yeah. So she was like, Oh, well let me tell you about, you know, what I do here. So she's telling me about what she does and then she goes, You know, if you had uh, a grandmother that raised you outside of the city, for example, and she was sick. The boy, uh, the boys, the uh, uh, the division for you, division for you uh-huh. would, uh, pay, you know, like you can get a leave of absence. Really? I was like, really? I so I was like, so I'm like, I'm 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 in Albany, and I'm like, and I'm like, this is me after having this epiphany. Like, I'm at a glass ceiling. Like, what the hell I'm gonna do with my life? Can I say? That? Yeah, 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 say whatever you want. And, um, <laughs> and um, I was like, so, like, what I gotta do to get this pop, like, to get this started? She was like, basically, we just would need to talk to your grandmother, and you put the paperwork in, and that's all it would take. I was like, dead serious. She was like, I'm dead serious. <laughs> so this is how I am. I'm like, I called my grandmother. On yeah. this, you know, she lived in New Orleans because I just visited her. I just like I went to visit when I was in Virginia. Yeah. Right. Before I came back to New York. Okay. And I was like, New Orleans was alright. I had a great time in New Orleans. I was by myself. Yeah. I was like, I could kind of do New Orleans. I had an uncle out there. I thought about going back to school. Yeah. This was like an opportunity. So I called my grandmother. Up. She, um, she happened to be living in the home. Mm. So I was like, and I, you know, like I just like had found her because I couldn't find her because my father and I we weren't like communicating. Okay. So um, I call her up. She's like, "Hey, man." I'm like, "Hey, Mimi." That's what I call her, Mimi. Mm-hmm. I'm like, um, "What you doing?" She's like, "I'm just sitting around here." I said, "Listen, I'm at I'm upstate New York, so I cover the mic up, my mouth up, you know, the, the phone." I'm like, "Listen, yeah. they they saying that I can come out there and live with you." You know what I'm saying? Help you out, go back to school. Yeah. All you got to do is tell them that you raised me. Yeah. She's like, "That's all you need me to say?" I was like, "Yeah, Grandma." She was like, "Well, put the people on the phone." <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. I, like, I put the lady on the yeah. phone. She was like, "Okay, cool. All right." Hung up. She was like, "I was like, you got to get your doctor." They had told me I need, they needed a doctor's note. Okay. The doctor faxed that over within like 30 minutes. Okay. They knew all well, every every one of these places need medical history. So real quick, right? right, right? They, but they sent it like in thirty minutes. I'm yeah, still you know, at the yeah, training. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the training. Before I left, the, before the break was over, I was I had set up this leave of absence. Yeah. So the leave of absence was, you know what leave of absence is? Yeah. They were going to pay you, which to, they did. Yeah. To to go somewhere. Yeah. So and I had like I I never take time off from my when I'm when I work. I don't you know yeah. take vacation days. So I had like literally I had honestly I had about. I had about seven forty, seven hundred forty hours. Yeah. You know how many hours that is? <laughs> That's two years. Yeah. Within thirty minutes, they had approved. Like I had a date. Like I was like, I'm about to bounce from New York. Yeah. And I'm gonna be getting paid for it. So that changed, like that was the whole, that was, that, that, that was, the that break was like a breakthrough, yeah. like, yeah. A, like, a, like, wow. Yeah. So I went to, uh, you know, my mother and every, you know, so I, like I, you know, I was like, I got, so this was in September and like I had planned to leave in November, like yeah. Thanksgiving. Okay. And so October, November, I had two months to get myself together, pack, get my ticket. And I did that. And I. So, so when you went out to New Orleans, you were just you weren't working. You was just kind of like chilling. Went chilling. Okay. And then you went back to school while you were out there. Yeah. Or? Yeah. Went back to school. Okay. Um, got a job. Started working with um, again working with kids. I was working at a place called um, the Sh- the Street Academy. 
What was that? Shout about? out to the Street Academy <laughs> in New Orleans. It was a it was a after it was the alternative school alternative school in New Orleans. What so, do you mean? Like the alternative school. So like school when the kids school, get yeah. kicked out of school. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then they get kicked out of that school. God. That's they said that's the school. final that's this all right. Yeah. School. Okay. And like when I say we wound up on the news, like cuz we were just turning things around. Yeah, okay. Um I can't think of the young lady now. She's a she's actually a newscaster in New York. New York? Now. Oh, yeah. New York now. Oh, all right. But um, I met her in New Orleans. She was actually became ma- uh, wife to the mayor, Mark Morial, and they all are out here now. I've wow. been trying to figure out how I can get in touch with her. Yeah. She used to sit in my office on the okay. regular and talk to us about what we were doing. Wow. But um, so it might be a good, you know. If I, yeah. Yeah. So, but um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, was at the Street Academy. For, for a while and then I was one day I was driving around New Orleans <laughs> and I was like what the hell am I doing out here yeah how long were you out there for it was so I got out there in Thanksgiving and so now we're talking about maybe it's this was a uh, 96 wow. okay so um this is 97 I'm talking about maybe 98 I'm like so was that around like two three years years. I'm like I was just like I was working in New York while I'm I'm in New and New Orleans is like nothing to New York you know it's a very small place yeah and I was like were you still getting paid from the other job oh yeah I was still getting paid paid. it was like my last check was coming it was like about to be my last check uh huh you just got tired of the scene right the guy had called me like hey what's going on like they they really held me down like yo you still can come back. Yeah. Let us know. And I was like, all right, give me a couple. So after my like my last check, I, I was like, yo, give me six more months to, yeah. to, to let you know. So it was like, all right, now you done been here. You ain't getting nothing accomplished. And like, so if you go back now, it's like you just had a long vacation. vacation. Yeah. yeah. I was like, nah, I can't go back. So I called him. I said, I'm not coming back. Okay. And so I was going to a community college out there. It was like crazy. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> My um, I had an aunt. She was a registrar, and um, she wanted to give me a job at, at, at the, the college? college. At the college, okay. Um, and so once I worked there, they were like, "Oh, we had you know for employees, you could take classes free." Uh, no, not free. Okay, okay, okay. I was gonna say you have so. Um, at the time, I was working at the Street Academy. Mm-hmm. And I was doing weekends at the university, just yeah. working in a computer lab. Okay. And then the job where I was working at Street Academy, they had a thing called AmeriCorps there. So there was some issues going on at the Street Academy. Yeah. And so they were like, they want to transfer me over to work at the AmeriCorps, but I had to join and become an AmeriCorps person. Yeah. Those are the red jackets, khaki pants. Well, we didn't have a uniform. You know, all right. right? No, but AmeriCorps is a um, is a nationwide agency okay, yeah, yeah. that helps um, um, people. Yeah. I don't even know if it's an economic thing. Um, like if you wanna, if you so you do community service work in, mm-hmm. in education, uh, like the environment, and I forget the other category. Mm-hmm. And in, in 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 exchange, think of it the Peace Corps, but for America. Okay. okay. So you do stuff in America, in America, and then they give you. Tuition. Re- co- oh, tuition wow. Re- so that's the reimbursement. It's about giving you tuition money. Right. Okay. So I took that. Once I got in that, and I was working the weekend, so I took that, and I got, I, I, I went to school. I yeah. used that money to pay for, um, and then I got on another scholarship once I got up and back into Delhi University. Once I got into Delhi University, I got into another scholarship program called the LAMP, yeah. okay. Louisiana Minority Program. Okay. So if you had, you had to be a science major. I was a math major. Okay. So, I, so all of a sudden now, I went from working to having a scholarship at wow. the college, you know. So I was I, <laughs> I was getting them because I was an employee. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had the AmeriCorps money, mm-hmm. and then they gave me a scholarship. So No, means I want to ask you this. Right. Because, all right, so and now from what we're hearing, you've touched a lot of bases yeah, in yeah. a lot of places when it comes to, mm-hmm. to child education. Right, right, right. Altogether, how many of these places have you worked in? Have you thought about, like, how many? Like, it's, it's a lot, right? It's not really a lot. It was... Uh, there was Boys Harp. I worked there many years. Yeah. I actually worked there many years. Went to New Orleans. Okay. And when I came back to New York, I got a, another job back in okay. with the boy, Boys Harbor okay. before I got to. I can I can say. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. All right. Before I got to the boy. If anything, I could. Uh, right. You know, right. Make so all right. Now, 
we're gonna I'm, for me I wanna I wanna give you this chance because <clears throat> if you guys don't know me and Dre we have nothing but mutual respect and love for means right. and um Recently, we the way we all got close with Means is because we all work together. Means I, I owe Means a lot because he gave me an opportunity I wasn't working at the time. He got he gave me the 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 way in and the plug to be able to start working at the place yeah. with him. So yeah. um and there's been moments where I've had horrible situations to happen to me and Means always backed me up. So. Yeah. When I heard Means through, Means was going through something, I felt like I wanted to give him a platform <coughs> and a way to be able to speak his piece mm -hmm. and people to get to know him and see his work and see the things that he's done. Mm -hmm. And I wanted him to come on here and do that. So do you want to explain? I mean, like, well, first, before you do that, do you want to explain your history of at the place first and then and then explain what happened with your situation? And so if, if right. and then we could get in depth with you. Well, I, you know, I, I thought about, you know, Really, you know, so basically, you know, I had a job and I, I got fired from my job. That's what actually happened. Recently. Recently. Um, so I, I, I don't honestly, like, I don't necessarily. Well, I think it's about something larger than, than that. What do you mean? I mean, you know, I think, I think, you know, ultimately, like the whole, the whole point of me wanted to be in youth development in the first place, which I never really spoke about, was just like, you know, going back to those days in the harbor, being like a, a young boy, it was just yeah. my mother and my sister, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We were like poor. Yeah. And my mother was a social activist. I never, I never, I didn't, I didn't mention her. Like, all the time my mother was like on the weekends, like protesting. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. in, so while I was at the- So you always had that activist background in your blood. Yeah, there. it's nothing to you. And then when I went to Upward Bound in high school, there was um, one of the last poets yeah. was a mentor of mine, yeah. Abio Doom. Okay, and so and I mean, if you know anything about the last poets, like they they are like they they, they, they you talk about uh, high school people, high school young man, myself being yeah. a high school person, growing up in um, Harlem mm. at the end of an era where civil rights and civil rights demonstrations were like at. It's height, highest height. Um, like I grew up at the in the tail end of that era. Okay. And so by the time I got to high school, like by the time I got to high school, you know, folks weren't really caring about yeah. um the community. You yeah. Know? Um so to be to be reintroduced to that level of like intensity and awareness about community yeah. was I was impression it was impressionable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, and that ultimately like had me thinking about like acting and like the roles I was playing, yeah. and, you know. Um, and ultimately like made me want to like do something, give back, give uh, yeah. Well, not just give back because I hadn't yeah. gotten anything, right? Almost like mold and shape the the, the help the, out, the right, right. Yeah, right, right? A little help out, yeah. I didn't want to be a sellout. I didn't want to just okay. you know like I you know it's funny. Uh, we'll get to this part, but like uh, you know. It's, lot, it's been, I, I guess, you know, there's been a lot of sacrifice in the community by a lot of people mm -hmm. um, who want to, like, have a better situation for, for uh, the people in, in the community. Yeah. And, like, I was, I wanted to be a part of that, yeah. that change. And I wanted to work with kids because I felt like as a young, I remember when I graduated from high school, I pretty much, like, followed the rules. You yeah. know what I mean? I wasn't, like, I wasn't getting in trouble. I hadn't been arrested. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't been drinking. I hadn't smoked. You know, I didn't even drink until yeah. I got to college. Wow. Like literally, like hadn't drank anything. Yeah. Um, but and so, but like I remember, like one day I had to go to Hunt Twenty Fish. I had to go somewhere, and I, I it was like right after graduation, and I didn't have no money, and like I didn't get into the college that I really want. Well, I got in, but my mother couldn't afford yeah. to pay, so I had to stay home, and yeah. I really felt like, damn it. Like I did what I was supposed to do, and it didn't work out for me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I I, I was upset, yeah. and I, I was like, nobody in the hood who wanted should have to struggle. Yeah. Like if you really want to get out the hood, or if you really want to better for yourself, if you really want it, it shouldn't have to be. And I so that was my whole thing. Like yeah. I'm gonna be about at 18. I had decided like at that point, like I'm gonna be about helping other people so that no one's going yeah. through this. Of course. Yeah. So I thought that. Um, I wasn't sure about what I was going to major in. I wanted to do something impactful to the world. And um, I thought that acting was going to, it was a, I don't know. I just felt like at the time, 
what was what's out there on TV was something I was like I wasn't sure of that being a pimp or a hustler or like portraying those roles was true to what yeah. I really wanted to mm-hmm. to be like those putting out there. Terrible eighties typecasting roles yeah. that they were giving out back you wanted, then. You yeah. wanted so when looking at those roles you wanted more of a a role that really truly at not I don't wanna say uh, let's say glor- you didn't want to roll that glorified the negativities from our neighborhood. I, I, I'll give you. I just give you an experience. I was at an audition. It mm-hmm. was for. Um, I already actually got the part. It was a voiceover. I did a voiceover. Uh, it was for a. It was like you know. So back in back in that time, they had like all of these like don't get don't get AIDS, don't get it. You mm-hmm. know, don't, this is your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your brain on drugs. You yeah, know, they the, show the, the egg, frying egg pan. Right, yeah. right. So they had a bunch of that. So I did this voiceover. I did this audition for this voiceover. It was a, an anti-AIDS. Yeah. At the time, it was this group called Boom. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Come back to my... I forget the name of the group that sang this song. Yeah. Okay. But that was this hit song then. Okay. So uh, we can do it all night. We can do it all right. So that was the song. Yeah. And then I was talking about AIDS. You can get AIDS if you share a need or have sex with... You know, yeah. So I remember uh, in the audition, I had they gave me the side, and I was I was um, editing it to make it sound more urban. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I was editing it right, so I'm I'm, I'm, over, I'm overstepping. So um, the guy, it's a, it's a guy in there. His name is it's a guy who's on the audition. His name I can't remember his last name. His name is Peter. This is a guy who I kept running into auditions with. Yeah. Like I always would see this particular guy. His name was Peter. I can't remember his last name. So he comes out of the area and he's like, I was like, what's up? He was like, yo, you know what they told me in there? I said, like, what's that? He's like, that I wasn't speaking black enough. I was like, How what? do you speak a color? Right. Stupid. This was at the audition for this. Right? Yeah. So he, he was pissed and he walked out. So I went and I started ad- 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 uh, adjusting my my script so you I could revi- sound. You were revising, I revising yeah. it so I could sound black enough. Yeah. yeah. So um, I get it inside the audition, and so it's a it's a booth. So yeah. this was different because usually mm-hmm. you're sitting in front of somebody. So this is a little sound booth. I'm in the sound booth. This was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Like I never did this before. Voice over mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm reading the script, and there's a so so there's a window. It's a thick window, and outside the booth, I could see the engineer, mm-hmm. and then the director was in there, and it was this woman. She was reading the script with. Me. So she had a little button. So she was like. So I'm, I'm reading, you know. So the word was ask. Mm. So I had purpose. I honestly purposely changed ask to ax. Ax. Mm-hmm. So the lady, I see her press the button. She says, the word is ask. Ew. <laughs> so I was what like. What was your reaction? I pressed the button. I was like, well, you, you told me to make it sound more urban. So that's what I was trying to do. So yeah. what, what do you want me to do? Do you yeah. want to make it more urban or not? Yeah. Or do you want the right pronunciation? Because I mean, you, you're being really like she was being like a little snot about it. I was yeah. like, and you're being really like a snot. So I guess I have you know my face. Yeah, your face, you, your facial face expression right. said it all. Like, and so the 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 eight the director's like, excuse me one second, and then you could just see him like. Yeah, you know, getting in her ass, ass, ass pretty much. Like, Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, but I say that to say that um, the in, the in, the industry at the time was like, you know, like how could how could someone who's not black mm-hmm. tell, tell someone you, who was yeah. black that yeah. they weren't being black enough? Yeah, and so my, which you know, still happens today, right? In Hollywood, so, right, yeah. you know, so like a, a lot of the things. So, like, I just felt like what. What I, I was, I was about, I was a part of this that was putting out these imagers, and I was just, I kind of had some issues with that myself. Okay. It was, it was, it was, deal, it was dealing a blow on you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let me ask you. So, um, this certain place. Right. How many years have you been at that place? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight. And an eight months, eight years and seven months. I didn't know it was that much until I went to LinkedIn, and you know they put, you know, LinkedIn yeah. keeps it, keeps, keeps all that, yeah, record. The day I, the day they let me go, April nineteenth. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. So I looked at yeah. LinkedIn. So, so, um, so it, this, it, it, this goes back. I got yeah. you know. This goes back two years ago. Yeah. So um, wait, can because I, I want, I want, right, I want right. you to be able to get all in detail. Right, with this, right, 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 right. Don't look at me smiling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. From the beginning, right. I want to know where did you see the change? What happened 
why it happened, mm -hmm. what went wrong. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, because it wouldn't make sense. Because you gotta. We go all back. know how mm -hmm. impactful you are to a lot of those kids. You changed a lot of lives. A lot of those kids love you they still yeah, love yeah, you yeah. like they still keep in contact with you they yeah. either look at you as a father figure mentor big brother whatever the case may be you still have an impact right why you why now what the fuck like that's my, my thing because it, it is very frustrating because i've been seeing that as a trend lately people who care yeah. or who care too much get that the back burn of all this like they get the the worst end of the stick and it, it doesn't make sense to me so i mean if you could explain explain to everybody who's been wondering and, and everybody that's listening what the I hell's mean, going on i think the the, the 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 one of the reasons why i wanted to come and like the thing like because yeah it, this was something that happened to me but it really was like it's the after effect isn't affecting me like it's affecting other people yeah mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like so the, what's important for me to first is just emphasize like first of all i'm not a victim huh. right and like so the boy, like, they didn't do anything to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They did it to themselves. They right. pretty much. And, um, the, and the kids who needed it the most. Well, I'm just saying, I'll say this. Um, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff I could talk about. Like, but I'll say this. You know, six months after I had started working at, the, at, at that place. Mm. I had this is like the beginning, beginning. The, the first six months, I, yeah. had, I had lost my job. What do you mean? So when I first started working there. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So so see. let me let me let, so like this, yeah. This is why yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot to so, get into detail about. So let me let me go back before I even came to the. I was working at a place. I was working at the boys. I had went back to Boys Harbor after coming back. From, yeah. Graduated from Dillard University, mathematics degree. Was accepted to Purdue to, uh. to their PhD program, but I wanted to come back to New York because I had an older daughter. And I was trying to be like, you know, responsible. I wanted to be in her life and things like that. So I came back to New York. That's why I came back to New York. From, okay. Um, but long story short, I was working at a program called Math and Science Upper Bound, okay. and we had just got defunded. Now, we were doing excellent work. Wow. It was a math and science program. We got defunded because- Defunded is when the state pulls your money away, well, right? it was a federal program. So the oh, federal- the federal pulls right. your money away. Because- okay. Just in case nobody knows it. Right. And um, so the reason why we were defunded was because um, in New York, New York State has the best math scores in the, in the country. Really? Yeah, yeah. As bad as our schools are, though. That's weird. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, but so, was that back then or, or, or like, oh, at that time? At the time, right. Right, right, right. So nationally, right speaking, there was no need for a program for a program to enhance mathematics math skills science because yeah. technically we're doing better than the nation. Yeah. So we got defunded. Wow. Okay. So I went to the boys. I got, I got the job. At the so and you were what? I was uh, what they called at the time. So the, my position has changed several times over these eight years. So initially, I was the after school academy, a ASA. Director slash <laughs> intermediate director. I had two job. I had two titles. I had two bosses actually. Really? Yeah, I had two. Did bosses. you have two checks? No, no, one check. One man. Two two, two jobs. Titles. And and my two bosses at the time. I don't know if I should say this, but there was some. They, they had some challenges amongst themselves. Okay. And so I, so there was already internal issues between them. Right. And so I was told that like, listen, um, part of what your job is going to be just keep helping them. To manage, because they, you know, they. So you're kind of like the mediator between. I, your well, bosses. I did you even want that responsibility? I didn't, couldn't really call it. A, well, I had been doing something similar at math and science up about, okay. by like keeping people in check. Because it wasn't just about like so. Let me explain this from youth development perspective. Outside of in most places, yeah. you have many hats in youth development. Yeah. So if you have to be the director plus the maintenance person plus you just do all this. Yeah, no, nah, I because I've I've come to you with right, certain things right. that I shouldn't have. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. So you know, um, so they closed the place. You know, they 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 shut that place down. They shut the the program down for all teens mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in the boys club whatsoever. And so after the six months I've been there, I had became a junior director. But I remember my supervisor at the time because I remember arguing with him for those mm -hmm. six months for it. I wanted to get a draw, uh, um, a dry erase board. Mm -hmm. Arguing I'm, in what sense? Because people would take arguing and just be like, oh, figuratively arguing. Like, like no, no. Like I, my issue was that we had these kids, young people in there, we yeah. were providing homework help. Yeah. And like we needed a, I wanted to. A, a board, board to display. Just, just yeah. So people could teach. Yeah. Okay. Off the board. Plus yeah. we had workshops and programs going on. And it was like. You know, it was hard to get this board. board that's and then I, would, I remember someone else get, was able to get like money to get like a, a Super Bowl party. Mm. So later on, when they closed down the after school academy yeah. slash intermediate department, 
the, the person told me, he said, oh, man, I knew we were going to, I knew we were going to shut it down. So going into hired hiring me, you, they, they hired me knowing, knowing that, why would and, they? And so his term was, I had actually called, I called him on my last day too. Yeah. But um, the term he said, well, I'll never forget this. He said, you know, I felt awful because it's like I gave you the keys to the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Mm, pretty much. Like, he literally set you that. up on a fucking sinking so ship. I was Yo. like racking my brain because I actually for six months thought that maybe mm-hmm. my priorities was yeah. out of whack. So, so, and so yeah. did he have to hire someone? Was he being pressed to hire someone? I don't never, I never. Because I, to bring you in and then six months later tell you that, you know, this department is closing down, were they pressuring him? And hire then, somebody, hire it looks somebody. like they knew in advance as well. So but, why even hire somebody? So that's when I probably say I should have, that was like in hindsight. The beginning of when, right. Yeah, like, uh, for me that to go, first, okay, like, this is going to be a problem in the future. Well, like where it was like, wow. Like, yeah. Like there were some issues, yeah. yeah. You know, like where it became me trying to, you know, address issues that was yeah. going on on a larger scale. That you know, cause so like all those kids, right? They still was coming, yeah. But there was no place for them to come to, as far as like for their age group, yeah. And what age group was that? That was the high school kids. So it was like what, probably 16, 13, 17? 13 and up. 13 and okay. up? All right. Well, actually at the time it was like 14 and up. So 14, yeah, I was, I'll say more, all right. So, um, yeah, so I would say then, and so then later, like, you know, like, you know, so I did really well in the junior prom. Yeah. You know, that's a junior director. How long were you doing junior? Probably majority of six years. I was, I was killing. I think that's what made me famous in the you know, yeah. I, I was. You were that. You became that guy. I became that guy because so the for kids, six years you you were doing. I, 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 meticulous. I wholeheartedly embraced working with those younger boys. Those yeah. youngest. That was, was that the first time you were working with that age demographic. Not really, but um, I was. I had been working with high school guys so long, high school kids mm-hmm. so long that it was the first time in a long time. So, okay. Okay. But I, you know, it was like I needed them and they needed me, and yeah. it was great. You know, it was a great six years, and Did, so they brought the program back. They that, called it the seniors. They decided. Is so that, is that when I showed up? That, well, no, <laughs> hell, so, that was um, been later. Though. That was right later. before even you and me were in that building. So bro. before, after, so they brought it back. Um, cause uh, so the executive director had to, we had a new executive director. They got a new executive director. Mm-hmm. Just, Let me ask you about that. Yeah. Were they getting executive directors like a revolving door? No. Well, I mean, at the time when I came in, he the the, the previous guy Brad Zervas, who I who I really did like, um, was having a lot of issues with the the board president or whatever. They had different issues with what yeah. he was trying to do. Yeah. And so you know, eventually, like. When he got when he got let go, yeah, I had been trying to work myself up in the agency. Okay. So by the time when he left and then all his regime left, I w- it was like for me it was like, oh, Are you serious? Now I start all reset. Yeah, it's right. like a hard reset. Yeah. Now I gotta start. Right. Yeah, yeah I gotta start building them up. And so That's I crazy. think at that point, I guess, um, you know, like at, by then I had issues because it was just my issues has always been never about like I'm not getting paid enough or like. You know my hours. It was always about the kids. The kids yeah. You know, and I think that you know, and the same thing with the acting. You know, my approach sometimes is a you know maybe like there's a word strong will not playing. I'm very strong will. There you go. Um, not play. Don't play the game. Um, that kind of stuff. These are words that people say. You know, and I'm yeah. like you know so. Um, but you you're not coming from a bad place. It's coming from a good place. That's what, that's what I, I feel like. That's the the message that they don't understand. If you're pushing for something for these kids, it's coming from a good place, right. and people take offense to it, which is very weird. Which I see a lot of these places as of late. Well, I'm not, I mean, you know, you know, we got to realize this something like part of the, you know, part of it is that. Well, they say. Um, Absolute power uh-huh. corrupts absolutely. Mm. Um, you know, um, Boys Club have been able to amass a lot of funding over the years. I mean, there are families, wealthy individuals who, who give to the, to the Boys Club. Mm-hmm. And so with that, I think that there becomes a need to, like, at some point, like, there's two things that goes on at, the, at any agency where there is the, the work that you're doing, the mission that you're working towards, and then how do you fund that? You know what I'm saying? And so I think that, I think that the people who 
took over, got caught up, or or are or, or are caught up yeah. with these people who are giving money, mm-hmm. and they're losing a connection to what they 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 know the words to say. They they feel it, but I think that sometimes when you're sitting in front of that money mm-hmm. and they want some things to happen, so, yeah, then to make you sure start that, losing why you really wanted that right, right, like you're not using it because hey I want to make sure these kids are having a great time and all this other stuff you're just like well I think there's the responsibility and I think you know what a lot of places don't do is like I think you're supposed to be educating the the donors about what you're doing and if they if they're a little bit like thinking or expecting you know or taking back about like our population then we're supposed to educate them not agreed you know um you know, there was a time where, like recently, where you know we had a, a a writing contest. We had members write in the contest, yeah. Yeah. so they can ask questions to to uh, to to Bloomberg. Okay. And um, you know, we we you know, it was decided that although a kid whose question was considered the question that they wanted to use. He wasn't presentable. Presentable. Get the f- so they, they gave his questions to someone else to present who was more presentable. You gotta be fucking kidding me! I mean, what the fuck? And but that person, you know, I, I, you know, there was a response to that, and they they dealt with that person. You know, I'm not, sh- you know, not many people knew that that had happened. That person was. They weren't no longer after that. Were you know? I did speak up on that, but like I had spoke up on a did. lot of different things. Um, yeah. And so like I don't necessarily want to give the credit to them. Like mm-hmm. they did something. Yeah. It's really bigger than that. And I, that's what I want. To definitely. You know, like, but we're not victims. Like we're you know like yeah. things happen to us in our community, but that doesn't make us a victim. You know, mm-hmm. just because I got fired from a job mm-hmm. and I was doing yeah. whatever, whatever, people might feel like it doesn't make me a victim. I'm not yeah. a victim in this. I think that. They made a decision, and ultimately, like, if they were going to ever change the culture in that building, that particular building, and if they weren't going to have my perspective yeah. as a part of this change, you had to let me go. Yeah. Because I was too influential. Yeah. Like, they were... So you think that's what went wrong? I mean, because yeah. I think... Because I, I, cause I, from, I, from all the things I was hearing, I, I think I spoke based with you. Like, for the last two years, things were kind of... I mean, I was. Yeah, I mean, I was. What what went wrong there? Because I know you became. The problem is, is that in 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 and again, this goes back to you know, you know, the leadership. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. the leadership. um, In what? In what sense? Like upper management or people? Yeah, upper management. The leader of the of that place. Yeah. Um. Um. You know, although they have a resume that shows that they've had experience working. In our community, in our population, I don't think they might have lost touch. I won't call it touch. I won't. I mean, you. You know, I don't. I don't think that person. I don't think they ever had touch. I think. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, sure. yeah. That's yeah. yeah. I think. I think. Um, I think. Like, how do you? <laughs> the level of, like, you know, I put a lot of energy. I didn't realize how much energy that I put into my work until after I was let go. Like okay. I, you know, I, I'm, you know, it was like a lot of stuff that I was neglecting on my own self yeah. Yeah. because I was more like, you know, prioritizing what this, you know, the mission was. But um, like, I just think that, um, you know, I was talking to a neighbor from yeah. '92. Cool. Right. Uh-huh. And 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 the neighbor was telling me about a situation that was going on in the school in the community. And my neighbor is a white person. Okay. And, okay. And um, the statement was that, you know, some of the African American parents felt like what was going on in the school was racist. What gentrification? No, no. It was just they were making some changes. That's, that's race thing here. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Gentrification. The moment, the moment the word comes racist. up, he just he just said gentrification. He goes flying. Okay. Yeah. He got- <laughs> no, it wasn't just no, not uh, just crazy. It just they were. I don't. I don't. I didn't get into it. Yeah. I didn't. You didn't try it. to dab too far. I was trying it, yeah. to like. I, I was on my way. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Plus you're trying right. to get it. Yeah. Okay. But, great. Great right. conversation. Yeah. So, yeah. He he made a comment. I had to like. I had to educate him a I had, little right, bit. A little bit. So here's he, some education before I go. He said, you know, I was talking to an African and they felt like it wasn't racist. So I said, hold on a second. Now, I said, do you know there's a difference between Africans and African-Americans? I was like, um, 
they don't see things and they don't see the, the America the way African Americans see America. Two different yeah. cultures. Right. I said I said second of all, um Right. So and I said besides that, if someone who's African American feels that something is racist, we don't need some other race or any other we don't need anybody yeah. to validate or support something that, you know, if someone feels like something is racist happened, that could be valid in itself. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but I was like, but, like, but in reality, though, yeah. like, let's just have a conversation real quick. He was yeah. like, okay. I said, do you agree that the construct, the present construct that we live in is a racist one? Yeah. And he, and he said, yes. So if, if the system is racist, which I believe it is, yeah. then any agent of the system is inherently racist. Yeah. So, because his point was, well, there's African Americans teaching. I'm like, does what? That doesn't, you know. That's that whole. Oh, well, you have a black president right. now. Excuse, like that right. shit is so. so I think I think that part of going back to this place, or just like the condition, mm-hmm. like because that that place is only in a representation of what's going on, like a larger issue that's going on in the community, in which is like, you know, there are there are different pe- there are different foots in our community. Mm-hmm. Trying to stamp out this and that and the third, uh, you know, I'm not always certain that the final agenda is 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 is, is, is advantageous face? for the community, uh-huh. or if it's advantageous for uh, the organization. Well, I'm saying because you know, I think there's two Americas. You know, like this is getting deep, but like I think that's ultimately like that's what we're talking about. Like mm-hmm. there is a difference between what myself and other people who are similar who identify with my experiences what we go through what we live every day yeah. in America and then you know like I, I have no understanding of how Donald Trump is in the position he is in right now with, yeah. about to, you know it's, it's, about to be the yeah. I, All he I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say yeah. he is he is the GOP candidate yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. say Cruz dropped yeah. out right. and, and so, so did the John John um I forgot his name John it starts with a K. Kirsch, the other one, the other GOP running candidate just dropped out. So he's pretty much. Oh, Kasich? Yeah, Kasich dropped out yesterday. So, you it's know, pretty much like, done. I, I don't, and like the stuff that he's talking about, like, so, like I don't get none of that. I don't, I don't relate to it. It's just, it's, it's scary to me. It's mind boggling. But I'm just saying, like, mm-hmm. so you have, like, you know, like, I know that at one point, like, the place, they were hi- actively hiring people who, who are from Ivy League schools. So like like then they uh they stopped you from promoting me because I well, you know I don't have a college degree right and but I have a shitload of experience, experience. so they stopped and you means means go somewhere and go I wanted to he, he works for me I had a position in yeah. my department it's uh-huh. just me and him hey. I'm, I'm like well instead of paying him ten dollars I want to pay him fifteen mm-hmm. and they were like no yeah you know look at these guys coming out of college right but here. yeah but I, we but we. There's an individual that I worked with in that place that right. we all know has a college education and was completely out of touch. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it made no sense. Right, so, right, it, right. it's fucking bullshit. Like, yeah. the, the, retarded, like yeah. the retardation is, is ridiculous right. when it comes to this shit. But, like, it's, it's not only... It's not about them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's really about, like, what we're going to do. You know yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and I... So... That's so what... Do, that's so, that, all right, I'm going to put it out there. So, do you feel like you were... A problem from them. You were you a thorn in their side. I, I, that there was, was no doubt. I was a problem. That that was when stopping whatever because they because because you went. I from, got thrown out. They threw me out. You know, like I I I mean, they gave me a little bit of you know something. Yeah. Like they didn't. I mean, but in all essence, you know, I'm talking about like just looking at how the year how the year goes. Yeah. It's a schedule like how things go. Yeah. Like were you picking up on that? Well. You know, there's certain things like in business, like you know, like there's a new boss, somebody gotta get, somebody gotta get fired. Yeah. Really? I, that's the rule, unspoken mm-hmm. rule. And like, I was telling people, like, I was doing the math. Yeah. I was like, it's, it gotta be me. Why? Well, one, two, like I said, two years ago, my the supervisor, two supervisors before the one, yeah. this one, I was told that. Um, oh God, that guy. That that. Um, <laughs> You know, you're not a fan. I see that downtown, you know, had issues with me. And I said to him then, I said, "Listen, w- what is this about?" Which there was nothing concrete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Well, you know, and, and I, you know, I speak my mind. You know, I'm like, if and, they got a problem, and, they and should that, fire me." That that's ultimately what I always viewed it as is 
you weren't the pavement. You weren't going to be walked on. I can't speak for anybody else right, in that right, building. Right. I can speak on when it comes to you because I've sat yeah. with him. I've spoken with you numerous times, and it's never been a thing where you'll just lay down and go, well, you know what? If you're going to give me shit, I'm going to eat shit. Right. No. You go, you know, but I, I know I, I, somebody was pissed off. I don't know. I, I promise you I didn't do anything. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that So made, that that pit, that. Freaking whoever you I, the only thing it I was could, still there that that still well there was only thing I could say the day before yeah um I had got a, a meeting request to meet at eleven I don't start work till one yeah and I was like like I just declined the meeting yeah and I got another one I declined it was like five that came right back right back to back wow so I decided after the fifth one let, let me just like See write what's an email going on so I wrote a, a very nice email saying hey listen I noticed that it was a request for me to meet at eleven but um. I thought that they were typos because they were they were set for eleven. Yeah. So I I declined them. Please reschedule them. So then I got an email back saying, which oh. is fair, right? So the email back said, oh well, can you meet eleven thirty? That that's still not okay. All you did was put 30, 30 right. more minutes. So, involved. I, so I responded without, back without really explaining why. So I was it. like, so at that moment I was like, okay, this is something. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm but I'm gonna handle this like. I'm gonna try to be, yeah. you know, everything at this point. Cordial about this, yeah. That last few weeks or the last month was like I was definitely like, I I, I knew something was up, you know, like so. I mean, but, people always get that feeling, that little that well, that, that I mean, easy feeling. You know I'm, what I'm saying? Like you know something's not rocking. Man. You know, part, my secret, uh, like my success with work is that I'm like I'm a body language mask. Like I look at people. Mm-hmm. Like I really like try to understand folks. Like I look at folks. I listen to people. I really yeah. listen. Mm-hmm. I, I not only listen to what they're saying but how they're saying it and so like the body language to me was like it didn't matter what I was saying like he was, I wasn't being heard yeah. yeah but I had I had already been feeling like I hadn't been heard so yeah but so. um I you know I don't really take it I really felt relieved afterwards mm-hmm. I know y'all are looking for this anger but I mean uh-huh. I'm, no I'm, not anger I'm you fired know up I am fired up but it is it's, it, it's, it's it has not, brought me to a yeah. level of like you know like what I had to say to myself is like you know what's next yeah, yeah. but but because the mission is still the same you know yeah. what i'm saying like i i do think yeah like i i you know i realize like you know i i, I do still want to like affect the community you know what i'm saying speak before we go before you keep going i want to stop you before you can t- start telling us about your future plans yeah yeah don't um, get to that yeah with with the teens that we've worked with how how has the response from them been i, I you know i'm on facebook with a couple mm-hmm. of them so i've seen like these guys rallying behind you but you know there's a lot of them i haven't had a chance to speak to have right. have they reached out to you i can I tell mean, you they're pissed they're pissed and like i i was over there the other day like so it's, you know the, you know usually like you get let go they you know you can't come back like you're banned but they you know you know they didn't ban me because my son goes there and like let me just talk about that for a second you know like i've always felt that it was important that he have his own experience that didn't have anything to do with me. And yeah. I used to always tell people, like, if you got a problem with my son, talk to my wife. Don't don't come oh, yeah. talk to me about it. Yeah. And I want to have his own existence there. And I, and I wanted my thing, because I knew how I was going to be. Yeah. And I also was kind of like, my, my son is 10. And like what I realized was that in three years, he'd be a teen. And I honestly was having problems with that. Because I was like, he and I both can't be in a teen center. Yeah. yeah. Of, <laughs> no, I'm just out of fairness yeah, for him, yeah. like how we do things, he needed to have someone like the other teens have who they can talk to get stuff out talk about stuff that wasn't their parent yeah, and yeah, like because he would have held back he would have probably held back so i was really like honestly afflicted because i really felt like my son is more important to me than me you know what i'm saying yeah. and so i really wanted him to like that was important. so i was like i knew that either i was gonna leave or he was gonna leave yeah, I, yeah, yeah. coming yeah. up right so but like the thing i want to let every like the, the young men to know like you know um like it's important that this happened, that and, and, and like they saw that this happened, not because like no like that that you know that life isn't always fair, fair mm-hmm. and that it isn't always the way you planned it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That you got to be flexible and like you got to make adjustments, mm-hmm. and we always got to be and and like you know just because if if this is your pathway and there's a you know a tree falls like that that doesn't mean you can't continue going forward yeah. you know you might have to walk around or climb over or chop that tree up <laughs> it, it may require more work of you but you know what i'm saying the work still has to happen and like so like you know didn't do anything to me i, I really don't have anything ill to say to i actually you know if like i told the boys there like all the memories i have had with people that mattered mm-hmm. 
those memories matter and those are special memories yeah. so how can I have anything ill you know what I'm saying to say about those memories I haven't like we I actually did work with with boys and I actually did like impact their lives and they impact minds and yeah. like what we did and what we planned to do and what we were working on was real yeah. and nothing can take that away yeah. so like um, like not working at the you know allowed to work continue to finish out this year really was you know for me was an opportunity for me I don't know what they're doing you know, yeah. but my name, you know, like I always said, it didn't say Anthony means so they, you know, there's people in place, you know, the, um, they, they make, they, they raised a lot of money, you know, millions of dollars. And so I, I'm going to trust that they have an idea of what they want to do. You know, they've been around since 1876 yeah. and, um, there's a lot of good in the I think part of the reason why I stuck around for so long was because I saw the potential mm. of what they have. Mm. I don't think they realize yeah. what they have. I don't think they understand what they're working with, especially particularly in that in that uptown East Harlem clubhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a new person there, and um, you know, I mean, you Good know, luck, I, think, right? I, I wish everyone the best of luck. All right, sitting right here in this triangle, there's about 50 years of youth advocate service. You're 30, probably 10 between um, 10 and 10 in between right now. Um, You've been reading the paper. I know you've been seeing the news. There's this influx of uh, uh, teens being uh, indicted, indicted on like uh, charges, you know, drug charges, gang related in your charges. My neighborhood, East Harlem, the Bronx, Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, as a father, as an educator, how 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 do you feel when you see these things? So I do actually have. I mean, like how I feel about it is, you know, it dis it's disappointing. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's worrisome. It's scary. It's you don't know any of them that that, that yeah I know these it. kids. So you know some of them that's yeah, been a part yeah, of those yeah, indictments. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I might not know them directly, directly. But some you've seen them. I've seen them, or I know them, or I know yeah. of them, or I know that some kids, or I know their name. You know, <laughs> you mean? know who hangs with them, right? Anyway, yeah. But um, <laughs> you know, um, but like it's I actually got a you know like I do have a solution. What's, what's that? So I mean. It, it's it's so simple though that it's it's not simple actually it's a very difficult solution but it doesn't require anything because yeah. I think part of like the challenge has been is like why we you know why is it that the community can't get together mm -hmm. and I think honestly the reason is because you know folks are comfortable mm -hmm. you know they they got mm -hmm. their cell phones they got they they got their Galaxy Sevens that you can pour water so everybody, on you think it's socially comfortable now huh? yeah 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 you know you can go to McDonald's when you're hungry you, um, you know you want to wear your you know you got you got to be on fleek you know you got your new shoes you go to the music to your music you know you, you know some people got to work some people don't work mm -hmm. some people you know they got their weed they want to smoke people want to drink you got folks who eat pork some people who don't eat pork yeah. folks are just busy yeah. and I think um, I, so I'm saying stay stay busy continue yeah. doing what you're doing mm -hmm. I just have a question I want to ask everybody it's just an idea I'm trying to put out here. This is, you know, I think, I think. Well, what I know is that nothing in this world um, was created, or that is created. Nothing in this world did not come from imagination. Everything comes from imagination, okay. and imagination is an idea. So that's what you want to put out there. So I want to put an idea out there because so just hashtag, like just like well, your hat, yeah. just like the plane, just like the car, just like this table we sitting at, an idea can become reality. So what, what was it called again? So um, I don't hashtag it. Hashtag what? What was it? What I don't. Know, I don't know if it's could, well. So here's the idea. I'll just tell you. So I guess. So yeah. my idea is that just just imagine for a second. So you got to just imagine this. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening, I want you to close your eyes. Right. Close your eyes and imagine your community where you live. Mm -hmm. Right. Think of look. You know, come out. Think of where you're building. You know, the people who's standing around, who's normally standing around. Think of the stores, where the stores are at, mm. what it smells like. Just imagine your, your neighborhood. Imagine that it's today, it's earlier today, that a, a boy who was 16, or a girl who was 16 and under, walked up to somebody to buy some weed, or was simply not going to school, or was just hanging out in the street. If, if someone, not just someone, everyone said something to them. Yeah. Like, what, ain't you in school? Ain't you supposed to be in school right now? <clears throat> yo, what you doing buying with, yo, you hold it, you ain't but 16, nah, 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 nah. So I take hit Don't make me call your dad. Yeah. Imagine. 
I, I, I don't mean to cut you off because yeah. I know you you in your stride, but um, I, it's, I gotta get this out. Right. Uh, I was listening to this podcast, uh, the Combat Jack Show. I always told Ray I would never say on anybody's podcast. <laughs> and I am talking about somebody else, but I was listening to Combat Jack Show. Yeah. He had Kevin Lyles, uh, former president of Def Jam, uh, former president of Warner Brothers Music, and he's from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about you know they asked him about today's youth as well, and he said that is the problem. What you just said is that they don't do that. Like they used to do when he was a right, kid. Right, right. He, his neighbors would right, check him if they right, seen him right, doing something wrong. Right. If his uncle or his aunt came, they put the belt exactly, to that ass. Exactly. It wasn't just my parents raised right. me; the village the raised me, right. and the village went Take from being about taking care of the kids yeah. in the community and in the community to I'm gonna worry about mine, mm-hmm. you worry about yours, exactly. and keep it moving. Because right. yeah. the reality is, is like who cleans your house? I do. You, yeah, yeah. I do. Anybody Ray came to your house, like family member? I mean, like your brother, like Yo Ray. I know you've been working hard. Um, I just came by today to. Um, have you ever done that? Have you ever went to anyone? No one does that. We're we're responsible. It's expected to clean your own house. Yeah. So, in New York City, all houses are in buildings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, who's responsible for the apartment building? Must be the same people who's cleaning their houses, the people who lives in those live buildings. In buildings. Like we, yeah. we're responsible for our own building. Yeah. So like it's just a natural concept. If we gotta clean up our house, the community is the house for our houses. Yeah, yeah. correct. So oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. my idea. It's just an idea. It's like yeah. if you think if you agree with the idea, I'm not asking one anything to yeah. do anything about it. Like mm-hmm. continue being you. Continue uh, whatever. But like if you say, I'm saying, if you like the idea. Yeah. One, do two things. One, commit to it yeah. with your own family. I'm not asking you to, to help nobody else's. Make sure that your children under 16 mm-hmm. are involved with something structured. And two, tell someone this conversation, have this conversation with someone else. Yeah. Ask them, do they agree? Yeah. If they say yes, ask them, one, to, will they be committed to make sure their own kids are structured? Yeah. And two, will they go to someone else to ask this conversation? And get them to commit. That's all I'm asking. That's as an idea. If we get, I'm just my idea is to get the idea out. If yeah. we can get people to say collectively, "Hey, you know what? I want a better community." And like, because I don't really believe that one, someone's gonna come outside of this community and fix all the problems. I don't think that any laws, the, the, you know, politicians, yeah. people aren't I there. I don't think. I don't think that we, change is gonna come. I think it's you know. I don't it's, think we we don't need anything us. in right. It's the people that's on the ground. I, I, we had this conversation not yeah. too long ago when I told you know I don't pay attention to politics, and everybody looked at me and was like, "Why not?" And I was like, "Because nothing that these politicians has done has directly affected me." And you mm-hmm. know, I, I I questioned them. I said, "How how how did the recession affect you?" Look at your pockets. How did the recession affect you? Mm. It didn't. But the people that's in our communities, when they do something wrong, that affects us directly. Right. So I don't believe in a a, a Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. I don't believe in the things that they can do. But I believe in what Anthony <laughs> Means can do. I believe in what Raymond can do. And this is just this is just my own personal right, right, view right. on it. It's us right here in these communities that can make the changes that we seek. Right. Because, I mean, there's 50 states. How can you worry about just you know you can't worry about this section of the Bronx. Right. You can't worry about that <laughs> section of Harlem. You, you're a president. You you have 50 other states that you have to worry about and then you have world peace that you right, got to upkeep. Right, right. You're a mayor. You got to worry about an entire state, not just one section, but the people that are right here that are rooted right in Harlem, that are rooted right here in the Bronx. These are the ones that I, I look to, to, you know, we need change. We need we need to fix this. Exactly. And for those people out there, because, you know, I've been, having, I've been, you know, this is not, like I've been talking about this and I know, I know like the, the response has always been, I like the idea, mm-hmm. but what's it gonna do? It ain't gonna do nothing. That's, that's what him does. That's what stops you. Know, you. And I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying, like that's why, like this has to be an individual, yeah. like because yeah. the community is not me. Mm-hmm. It's not even the leadership. The community is the individuals. Yeah. To, like the reason why the streets in New York look like the way they look is because everyone drop, throws trash on the ground. It's, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't got nothing to do with sanitation ain't doing their job. It's yeah. people throw stra- trash on the yeah. ground. Pretty they much. let they, you know, 92. You know, you could, you could your dog can doodle all around that Yeah, block. that doodle block. There's a, do- there's a block know? called doodle people block. People don't curb their dog. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody who lives in housing build, I don't care what, where we're at, you know when you get on the elevator, it's going to smell like piss. piss. Come on, like, but <laughs> why we know this and why that's stop. the way it is. Yeah. How, why? Yeah. And like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, so we just got to get tired. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, you know, I think I'm it's not It's getting sh- there though. Yeah. 
yeah. it's getting there. Yeah, but like you know, the, the people you know, like this job, we you know, the job I just left, and you know, this kind of work. This is this is uh, you know, a slow process. Yeah. It's not it's not a. Yeah. Before yeah. before we, I want to do to get him. Before, I want to do to get him. Tell him why he mad. Let's go to a quick commercial. Yeah, quick, before we'll, that, then we'll get into. After you tell him why he mad, I want to get into um, what's next for you. Definitely, this is the Ray and Trey show. I am Dre Manning. This is Raymond V. Vicious. We're still here with Mr. Anthony. Oh, no, this no, is no correction, a, Lord <laughs> Anthony. This Meads. might be a two parter. Uh, no, no, we are gonna make him watch through this whole thing. We'll be right back after this commercial. Welcome back to the Ray and Dre show. I go by the name of Dre Manning. I'm Raymond Vicious, and we are still sitting here with Lord Anthony Means. Ray. You know what time it is, right? I know. You know what time it is. Means I'm not, you're not familiar with this, man. Ray has this great segment that we put into the show. It's called Tell Him Why You Mad. For those who, who've never tuned in before, you got to understand <laughs> Raymond V is an angry individual. <laughs> he is an angry individual. Right, and he's going to tell you why he's mad. Ha, 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 ha. You mad, bro? You don't want to see me angry. Why are you mad? Richard, you, you know what really grinds my gears? You mad, you mad. <laughs> Raymond V, time to tell these b****s why you mad, son. All right, first of all, let me start off this for you, Means. Mm -hmm. Much love and respect, man, for me and Dre. Um, tell them why you mad. What I've been seeing lately, and when I'm done, guys, please give me a rebuttal for this. What I'm starting to see in a lot of these education programs is not only is it making me disgusted, but I'm sick to my stomach of what I've been seeing this new trend is. Mm -hmm. People who care are now getting burned. <coughs> This is dedicated to Anthony Means, to the Bianca Velez, to the Terrell Blakes. These are all friends and individuals who had something to do with child education. And because they care too much, they got burned. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're telling people now is, okay, you care too much. You got to go. Mm -hmm. Who's that hurting more? Is it hurting Anthony Means? Is it hurting Bianca Velez? Is it hurting Terrell Blake? These are all people and individuals I've worked with and respected in child education mm -hmm. who've gotten hurt. Mm -hmm. Anthony Means is owed so much for helping some of these kids. I thought he wait. said old. Yeah, yeah, I thought he called you no. old. <laughs> is owed a <laughs> lot. over there, man. <laughs> wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. A lot of these kids are where they are in life today because of this man's influence. Mm -hmm. And instead of us congratulating a man like this and, and, and parading a man like this and, and showing the world a man like this, what we do is we go, thank you, but it was enough. Uh, you, you, I'm not done yet, hold mm -hmm. on. I've seen other people that I've worked with who were <laughs> assistant directors become directors at 23 years old they try to they try to do something different, and you know what they get at the end of the day? Thank you. It was enough. Hmm. What's funny is that a, a, I can't believe I'm I'm quoting a video game quote. Remember, I think you heard me say this before. You want to make enemies? Try to change something. Hmm. That man tried to change something, and at the end of the day, hmm. what he did he created enemies. Hmm. Is this what we're trying to put out to the world now? Instead of helping these kids get to where they need to be at, instead of having people who care. We have people getting told, oh, you care too much? You gotta go. Mm -hmm. I've seen individuals who don't give a fuck, and they be, they're still at the same place, mm -hmm. doing the same horrible things and helping these kids get nowhere. There's a person who works at the YMCA now, at the after school, who replaced a friend of mine named Bianca Velez, who tried to change something, and you know what they told her? She has to go, but this bitch, who doesn't give a fuck, who's, who, who doesn't care for any of these kids, doesn't know any of these kids' names, could care less about their conditions. Hell, there was even a time there was a kid who who had um autism. She was like, I don't want him at, at the party. I don't want him in my program because I don't want to deal with that. She's there. They're giving her the golden ticket. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're putting out there, huh? After school programs and child education programs. The minute you give a fuck, you mm -hmm. got to go. Well, I mean, we're at war, right? I mean, be honest with you. You know, and like, you know, if, if you think that people want black and Hispanic men and women to be aware and and talking and and organized and mm -hmm. like they don't want that no you think they want that do you think they want do you think they prefer all of the hood where everyone's smoking weed and drunk and high and shooting at each other you think they prefer that or do you th think they really want a hood where you could walk down here and, and, i mean of course they want dudes the just trying to like they want to the read and build their community up. Like, and can you imagine if our teens, going back to this idea, were like 
pro their community. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to clean up this lot today. Or we're going to, not because, like, because we want to have a playground. I mean, I mean, like, if they were just more, not to say that the way our teens are is bad, but I'm saying if we as a people were more about what's going to be advantageous to mm -hmm. us, there's a lot of this stuff that's not going to be happening. Yeah, and I'm saying like people want this stuff to continue happening. They yeah. want this. They want to have the police in the neighborhood standing up over us with the damn camera or the or the light or that do that thing that they crank up. Oh, the spotlight. The, the, not the spotlight. The, the tower. The, the tower. tower. Yeah, the, the tower. With, you know, with, the, yeah. with the multiple with the cameras multiple that, camera that and sensors, and they yeah. could tell. You know, they like that. There used to be one right here in front of my window. They like that. There was one in front of our block. One thousand one hundred and thirty-seven. What's that? That's the number of blacks and Hispanics that were shot last year by police. Wow. That's 1,137. What makes me disgusted is the fact that half of these jackasses that are upstairs in, in, the, in these corporations and all these apps, they don't know anything. They don't give a fuck. They don't come down to see what's going on. Mm. They automatically are okaying all these stupid ass decisions that's not hurting anyone but our children, mm. Right. Mm. our kids, mm. our communities. And, and it disgusts me. Look, means I know... They see numbers, we see people. Right. But we got to stop worrying. Like, I mean, like, it's not going to come from them. As yeah. I keep saying, like, yeah. we're looking... You're looking for... Yeah. The slave master. Yeah. To free... You, you, yeah, you, yeah I, no, no, you're, you're right. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, there was only one group of people that ever... That ever, in the history of the world, that ever overthrew their master? Who's that? Americans. No other people ever they overcame. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, as a slave, if you overcome your master, mm. that's not, from the, from the master's perspective, mm. you're like a terrorist. Mm -hmm. You know what they do to terrorists. Mm -hmm. they, that gives them every right to destroy you. Mm -hmm. As soon as you decide that you're going to call yourself free, mm -hmm. as soon as you decide that and declare that for yourself, those who, who enslave you are going to have issues with you. Yeah. You're going to create enemies. Yeah. So, like, Anybody who was not for the community yeah. is against the community. Yeah. Period. There's people who live in our community who's not for our community. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so like, I'm not surprised that, you know, like we're at war. We've been at war. Like, dude, we're at war. Like, this is war, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We gotta like wake up, cause um, the corporations and it's not gonna come. F you you go to some other communities, stuff don't be. Going down without them having a say so. Yeah. You go to Brooklyn and go to um to, to you go to Williamsburg. The, yeah. You can't do nothing in them Jewish communities without them Jewish people. You, the police can't even roll up on folks like when somebody murders somebody, yeah. they gotta go talk to the, the community the leader, community leader yeah. the, the rabbi yeah. and get and the rabbi take you over yeah. to homeboy house yeah. and then he get locked yeah. up. There's no, I'm just going to pull up and show up at his so, house. Yeah. Look, I want to I wanna close out my telling why you're mad with this. Look, means it's horrible what happened to you. In my opinion, I know, like you said, you're not a victim. We all know that because you can bounce back from anything. You've seen it do it time and time again. For me and Dre, thank you for everything, especially me because you didn't have to give me an opportunity and you did. And every time I was in a tough situation you always stuck by me and, mm -hmm. and you put your reputation out there for me and i'm a knucklehead and i'm a, and i i'm, I'm hard to deal with understand shut up i hate you <laughs> so um thank you for me and dre like much love and respect man at the end of the day they can never take away what you did to those exactly. kids and they mm -hmm. can never mm -hmm. what we did undermine i know i know you say you say time and time again it doesn't say anthony means club of new york whatever <laughs> the reality is, is it, it will was. always be that yeah. and it'll always be that when they think of when they think of the boys club when they think of the teen center where they think those juniors who became teens and had nowhere to go while you were still running the team you saved took, lives you know you kept them there those teens you know, I mentioned Tyreek. You know, right. you kept him there. You know, Devonte. <coughs> uh, you know, yeah. we can go down and all list, those kids are in great places now you know in what? their life. And I'll even speak on the guys who were stealing from. Us. <laughs> 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 we, you kept them there. You kept them there. You kept them out of safe. So uh, you kept them safe. Yeah. You know, I watched you numerous times leave out and go. I gotta go into the projects and get these kids out. Yeah. You know, there was times that you would have to go and sit in the precinct and. You, you put your all into the program and that is why people admire you and they appreciate what it is that you do. That's why we wanted you here not to 
Blast Boys Club. Right. But want to show we want yeah we wanted to, to show the world to you why, and, and your work why and your work people, ethic, yeah. why people love anthony means uh-huh. and why they want anthony means back in these programs and why it was such a big thing when they heard you were you know you were let go i don't like saying you were fired you know right. like i don't like saying that um why, why when you, you were relieved of duty yeah there we go like when you when you moved on to when my position things. was dissolved yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know so, and yeah. you're you're always gonna be an important figure in these guys' lives. I mean, come on, they're taking you out. You know what I'm saying? Like right, you're right. always gonna be an important figure in their lives because for the ones who didn't have dads, you were their dad. Right. For the ones who were, you know, who who looked at you as a big brother, as a mentor. I looked at you as a mentor, as a big brother, and I always came to you just like Ray came to you and I admire you in so many <coughs> different ways. I speak about you to to my kids and to my girlfriend and you know, if I have another son, I'll name him Anthony. No. You know what I'm saying? Like no. I, I don't I have no problem with doing that whatsoever because you motivated me and you've taught me so much more. I had a con- the last conversation we had before this one, I sat with you, uh, we we just finished the meeting and I said to you, you know, you know, working with you has taught me so much. Mm. You know, we would sit in meetings and I would be afraid to talk because I was intimidated by you. Mm. But being around you has taught me to present myself in a certain way and in a, in, a, in a certain type of caliber where it's like, you know what? I can sit with me and go, you know, we, we can do this. And, yeah. and and I learned that from you by watching you. Mm. I watched you and I listened and I and I truly understood and understand who you are and what you're becoming. And then, you know, you you helped me ascend to God, Dre. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you, know, you helped me ascend and... and, and God Ray, yeah. God Ray, God Ray, exactly. <laughs> Yo, wait, if if nobody, finish. if no, if if when people finish watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, if they don't take anything from it, I want them to make sure that they take how important it is to have figures like yourself in the community, in these programs, wherever it is that there's a need for Anthony Means. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's a need for Anthony Means because I've never seen a program director care as much as you did. Yeah, and um, somebody told me um, that recently, like, you know, I, <laughs> you know, they said it in a way that was like, you know, I think out of all the people I've seen working anywhere, yeah. you're the best person I've seen doing that job. Yeah. So I appreciate that. You know, yeah. I put, try to put my, you know, it's important. I thought it was. You know, you know what's funny means, so. and I, I can't believe you over oversold this. If it wasn't for means. There would be no be there would be no Ray and Dre. I was gonna mention met. that. I was gonna wow. wait for the end. We yeah. would have never met. Wow. Never Look, met. like I said, I'm gonna close you, it out with this. You got him the job. Yeah. I sent you the email, this heartfelt email. You didn't even look at my resume, and then you hired me off my email. And I met this asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a tool. Yeah, so um, so I'm gonna finish it out with this, man. Look, like I said, thank you. And I want everybody listening to keep this statement in mind because at the end of the day, I feel like that sums you up. You wanna make enemies? Try to change something. Yeah, I really want everybody to keep that in mind. Let's let's go on. Yeah. So we're gonna round this out pretty much, and uh, you know, I, for, what is the future for Anthony? What's next for Anthony? Well, like, what's, what's what's next for Anthony Lord me? No, no, whoa, whoa, say it correctly. Oh, excuse it's me, Lord Anthony me. Excuse me, excuse me. All right, you gotta get it right. Wait, School of God. You know what I'm saying? What? What? I don't know what I mean. That's disrespectful. But all right, go ahead. <laughs> Um, so, um, you know, uh, the re- the revolution will not be televised. You know, I, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think, you know, that work is important. I, I'm going to continue working in the community. Um, I probably will not be, I'm hanging my hat up on oh, nonprofits. I okay. don't want to, I realize that, you know, I am, I am a little bit like kind of rebellious. Yeah, kind of like a rebe- rebel. You're a rebel? I'm a rebel without a code. No, no, the word is non conformist. <laughs> uh, you know, I always try to, you know, I, I'm i not happy with the, you know, the world. The, the, me- my the norms. The norms. The norms yeah. is whack. I don't like yeah. what's going on. I don't like the, the, the statistics mm-hmm. is not in favor of my, for my son. Mm-hmm. World is not a safe place for my son. Very mm-hmm. true. Nor for the sons and daughters of most of the people that I know. Yeah. And I, and I, I just want to do something about that. It's not safe for my daughters. You know, it's not safe for, you know, it's, I'm not happy with the community. And, um, I just, you know, I want to do something about that. Um, so I'm going to continue to work in the community um, through the Social Action Network. I've been working with them for a while through my church. I'm mm. going to continue to work with them. In fact, um, the 14th of uh, April. Yeah. We're in April, right? That's in two no, weeks. May. We're May. We're May. May. I'm sorry. May. 14th of May. Yeah. Sorry. 
um, um, come on down to uh, Canaan Baptist Church. We're having a... Where's that located? The, yeah, that's, yeah, we're on 116th Street between Lenox and 7th. Okay. Um, what we're doing is um, we're having a retreat in the summer, in June. And what we're doing is having a fishbowl event on the 14th so we're asking young people to come out and um just kind of you know i I think part of the the issue um with our community is there's a definite disconnect between young and old people Mm -hmm. and um so at the church there's a lot of older people there and what i wanted to bring light to was like there are issues that as young men you guys are young men Mm -hmm. and you guys you know you walk these streets and you live your lives and that there's issues that you guys are having you're struggling with um Mm -hmm. and like who do you guys get to talk to about it? Mm. So we're asking young men to come out to, to share what their experience has been as young men. We have some, some questions that we want to ask. Mm. And, 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 and t- so it's a fishbowl. So you, there will be a conversation of, of, amongst young men mm. um, being led by young men about these conversations. And okay. then the, old, the elders will be around watching. And then so there's a, there'll be an exchange. Oh. This is going to be really interesting. So, that sounds great. Yeah, so you know that's going to be on the 14th. Um, I'm going to continue work in the community I'm not sure where this goes I'm not, I'm not sure how to take this idea to another level I'm writing something now so you're trying to figure out how to, how to, how to start this train huh? how to start this you know like you know this hashtag you said or yeah. you know this how, movement we, we should gotta help we gonna, yeah. we're gonna we hashtag gotta, it we gotta, we gotta yeah. so I definitely. wanna get a movement and just an idea I'm just trying to get an idea yeah. out there I just I feel like yeah. you know perhaps um, if we all are talking about the same thing or thinking alike then through that dialogue, through that exchange, we can figure out the actual solutions. But I think that the first step is just agreeing that this is what we want something better. Yeah. Um, but um, as far as like you know, paying my bills, I'm, I'm gonna be. You know what? Uh, we all know I, you'll I be put fine. 30 years into nonprofit and the community, and um, I think right now, you know, I have a I have a 10 year old and an eight year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, my oldest daughter is uh, she's about to be 21. Well, she is twenty. Well, she about to be twenty one in January. Okay. Um, so I uh, need to start focusing on you know putting some something in the coffers for my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm gonna you know I think I'm gonna uh, put my uh, these mini talents to use. Okay. Uh, to 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 earn some yeah. some 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 uh, fetty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> some chicken. Some chicken. Some, <laughs> Some okay. decades. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna work. Um, I got a couple of things lined up. I think um, it's looking more like IT. Okay. Um, you know, just, you know, my my background's in mathematics. Mm. Um, you know, that, there's a lot of stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a job. I don't know. Uh, my wife is talking about some business ideas. So it's a lot of things. I, I really, I'm kind of up in the air. I'm gonna actually take this time to like, mm. you know, I've been just relaxing. You know, yeah. um, you know. And like, I'm not gonna settle. Yeah. You know, I think yeah, I'm gonna yeah. uh, find a job that I, that I can get some in, that I that I enjoy doing. It won't okay. be, you know, I, I do I did love working with the kids. Yeah. I, you know, I, I love the I love those kids. Um, I think I can make I could do the same thing. I don't have to necessarily be working for somebody because ultimately at the boys club it was like at the end of the day I had to listen to them mm-hmm. and it was like some things that I felt like I wanted to do. Yeah. And again, like you said, and I said, you know, my name wasn't above. That and I think maybe, maybe I should have been a little bit more, you know. Um, it's a job at the end of the day, and like I was looking at it as something a little bit more like a responsibility. Yeah. You know, like a, a opportunity to impact the community yeah. on a larger level, and I don't think they really wanted all of that. Yeah. They wanted that, yeah. but not, you know, like. The, the high, the, the, like the real talk is like I couldn't have taken the boys to a Black Lives Matter rally. That wouldn't have been something that would have been considered. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. that, and 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 this is something I've asked about. And so, like at the end of the day, right? Like because because folks are fearful of like well, what is that? How does that impact the boys' club? Mm-hmm. And like when the boys, you know, when when any agency is more important than the people that it's supposed to be serving, mm-hmm. then then you don't even gotta look at that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like. Uh, I mean, yeah, they did fire me, but like part of the issue between, you know, because they 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 fired me like, you know, like, like get out, yeah. you know, like you know I had to leave, um, and it was at the it it wasn't the way in which they did it. It was something towards me. It yeah. didn't affect me like I guess they might have intended to in their brain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the per like you know the people who got impacted the most, the people who are being impacted are those kids that's yeah. there. You know? Yeah. 
Um, um, so, but like, you know, even the story I told about the, uh, the, the, the letter writing, yeah. I can go on. There's a lot of stories. And so, like, I just think that I, like, the universe made me leave. It wasn't, yeah. really wasn't Boys Club. It was time. It was time. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, like I said, they, the focus wasn't really on the kids, as far as I'm concerned, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And so, you know, they'd be all right. I think people are going to be acting for me. Back. Well, they uh, they actually yeah, they wanted to know if you were going to be a permanent uh, uh, fixture in the program, and I was like I was like nah he's just coming for right now you know you, you, we gonna we just gonna sprinkle just a little bit on you know I we think take people that. are gonna be handing this up for me I, to come back I honestly in, enjoyed I every think this was amazing moment of this you kind of stumped oh, what, up my the, favorite episode the, so you know the the acting I, I got a call from my uh, my agent and my old coach so. yeah. Oh, so I, I actually uh, I need to check my email. I probably so I, you know I, I'll be going back into that as well. Honestly, Ooh. man, I, I can't wait. Can't wait. I can't wait. I, I see you shining. You gonna glow up? I'm gonna glow up. You gonna glow you gonna be up? The next, um, Morgan Freeman. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you gonna have him hit the weights. Yo, my thing is, I can't wait to have me come back for another episode because I yeah. feel like when we since now we got this out the way. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot more in depth to talk about if, that. That Donald Trump, I see it hit a nerve with you. If if if, we, if Ray and I can make it to fifty episodes, mm. I want you back. Okay, and Before that's we, that. And that's if we no no no. See, I want if we make it to fifty episodes, that means I've tolerated you for fifty episodes. Who's on me? What yeah, means you? Why so, yo? <laughs> why haven't I slapped Andre for almost how many years now? <laughs> we're, we're, actually, tell people what Look, you told me one time. How come I haven't slapped you yet? And why do I tolerate you? Because you love me. All right, so moving on. <laughs> That's fine because you're, you're my brother. So. But I definitely got it. We got to get means on because yeah. I think hearing him talk about Trump yeah. hit a nerve. Yeah. I think there's a lot of more social issues you want to talk about. Oh, yeah. About. yeah. Talk about social issues. Definitely. Definitely. I think we definitely got to get you back on. One, once it means I respect you, man. I care. I love you, bro. Like, yeah, I love you, love you. We love like, you too, man. Definitely and, love and you. And I appreciate man. everything that you've taught me. I appreciate everything that. Uh, you, you showed the kids and, and, and you know these guys are like my little brothers now you know mm. and I, I know them I know Ray I know you I, I'm God Dre because of you and therefore I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you know your next endeavors and I'm supporting it 100% yeah we're behind you all the time 100% no matter what, no matter what happens with us you know we we here. Right. We got you, man. We got All you did back. was create more means in the world, man. Mm. Mm. More like laws. I, I, more laws. <laughs> yeah. like, like I said, every program, every neighborhood, every, commun- every community needs Anthony Means. Uh, you are a staple. Mm. You are... you. Well, you are that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> All right? I think we can end it on that one. I think right. we can end it on that one. That was the perfect one right there. All right. Thank that, you. You uh, are that brother. You thank are that you brother. Ain't. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out the Ray and Dre Show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, if you subscribe, you get to update on all of our content. Uh, make sure you check us out on iTunes, YouTube. Means you have any? Uh, you want them to check you out anywhere? I don't, I'll have to get back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you to Anthony Means, by the way, yes, man. Thank, thank you. you. This is a, an amazing. First interview, honestly. Interview, man. The next person we interview is got it. Yeah, yeah, they got this. This is a tough yeah, one for them to pull. Yeah. yeah. Means, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening, everyone. All right.